The reason why Jesus needed to die was because God is just. Man broke the law. Man must fix the law. God runs heaven, but the heart belongs to man. Last Sunday, we started a series, The Rain is Here. And the focus last week was on evangelism, which is literally taking up the responsibility where the ministry of reconciliation is concerned. Second Corinthians chapter 5 makes us to realize that we have been reconciled to Jesus so that we can now extend the same ministry we have received to our world. So talking about reconciliation of people to God is not just the job of the pulpit. It's the job of everybody in the pew. We have a responsibility to join God, to partner with God in bringing the harvest of souls which he desires in our time. Jesus died over 2,000 years ago, paid the price, made the sacrifice, and we must make that sacrifice count. And how do we make the sacrifice count? We make it count by being intentional and by being deliberate in reaching to others. Don't you never say you have a responsibility to ensure your world knows about Jesus. He died talking about Jesus. Now it's your turn to make that nearly too good news to be true of his sacrificial death that makes you and I hoping to, you know, becoming part of his family. We need to do something about the great sacrifice he has made. Now having laid that foundation of evangelism, which is much needful, Then we move to 2.0, the rain is here. The rain is here 2.0, and the emphasis this morning is for us to understand what the latter rain is all about and how we can engage in the latter rain. I did a little research, and I realized latter rain refers to a seasonal rain that comes up in crop cycle to boost harvest. Towards the end of the cycle. So, latter rain speaks of what? A, 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 a seasonal rain that, you know, that comes up in crop cycle and helps to be what? A bountiful harvest. Don't you ever say, God is releasing rain to cause harvest everywhere. The harvest we saw in Acts chapter 2, talking about after Jesus was resurrected and the first set of disciples gathered in the upper room and the Spirit of God came down and they began to speak and the next thing, thousands upon thousands, you know, were moved to become part of the family of God. It's going to be a child's plate compared to what is coming in our time. But Joel chapter 2, verse 28, calls this rain the outpouring of the Spirit. So this rain is nothing, it's not emotional, it's not physical, it's spiritual. It's a move of the Spirit of God that comes upon a generation, quickening the hearts of people, causing them to be pulled towards God. An awareness like never before. So when I talk about, when I think about that outpouring, these are the words that come to mind. Awakening. Reviver. A time of awakening. A time of reviver. A time of renewal. You you know, he says something which I love so much. He said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. There's no exemption. This move of God will cover every gender. It will cover every race. It will cover every age group. He said, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vision. Even your old men, they will dream. Everyone has a part to play. God will not leave out any people group or any age group. No race will be left out. It will be such a move of God that will touch everyone grass in the field. 
That's what Isaiah, Zachariah says. He said, everyone grass in the field. We feel the impact of this rain. But listen, as powerful as this plan of God is, this plan can only be effected with your cooperation. And somebody is wondering, why me? Is it not God? Is it not all powerful? Can he not just do what he wants to do? He should leave me in my little corner. I mean, he's God. He created me. He should make things work if he wants it to work. What you need to know about God is that God is not a lawbreaker. Write it down. God is not a criminal that breaks law anyhow. In fact, the reason why Jesus needed to die was because God is just. Man broke the law. Man must fix the law. So what he had to do, although he loves man, was to now turn his own son, who was full spirit like him. You know, the Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is a spirit. And his son was just like him, a full spirit, nobody. He now put flesh around spirit so that his son will have the right to pay the price for man. But it has to be a man that will die because it was a man that sinned. That God is that just. And in the same vein, if you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, God created man in his own image, right? And he gave him dominion over all the works of what? Of the heart. I don't know if you have seen that in your Bible before. And I don't know if you have seen Psalm 24, verse 1 before. The heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Can we say it together? Say the heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. But there's some other scripture you must see along with this scripture to give you a clarity. Psalm 115, verse 16. Oh, God is the one that controls everything on heart because the Bible says the heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. God created the heart. But look at Psalm 115 verse 16. Are you there? He said the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord. But the heart he has given to the children of men. So verse 24 says the heart is the Lord. Now, but verse, Psalm 115 now, 115 verse 16 now says, okay, the heavens and the heart belongs to him. But he has now delegated a portion. And that portion has, happens to be the heart. So God runs heaven. But the heart belongs to men. He's the Lord primarily. But now he has passed it to men. Because in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, he gave men dominion over the heart. You know, when people don't understand this, they blame God for everything that goes wrong with the heart. A plane crash. They call it what? God's act of, act of God. Don't you never say disaster, disaster. is not an act of God. You know, when it, whenever people make statements like, oh, it's an act of God, it's a reflection of their depth of ignorance. Because the Bible says in John chapter 10, he said the thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The devil is the one that steals, the devil is the one that kills, and the devil is the one that destroys. If you want to know about God, you will know that God is merciful, God is gracious, God, God is slow to anger. God is good and God is kind. He is love. Why would God kill a baby in the womb? See? The reason why people think like that is because they think God is still the one governing our hearts. No, it is us. So I say, are we that powerful? Yes. You are, come on, say neighbor. neighbor. You, are powerful. you are extremely powerful. I mean, God says, you run this place. This is your company. The heart belongs to you. But the sad thing is, after God gave the heart to man, Man became careless with what God gave him. Somebody say, how? If you read Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, you will see how man allowed his enemy, Satan, to trick him out of his dominion. Mm. So man, the first man was tricked out of the dominion God gave him. And as a result of that, the art which was supposed to be Man's 
domain in terms of being in charge now became a domain governed by the devil. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 3, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them who are lost, in whom the God of this world, and that God of this world there was not referring to God, capital God. It was referring to the devil. The devil became the God of this world, but the original 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, okay? But the, 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 the original God of this world was man. But the devil took over when he partook of the forbidden fruits, which made man to transfer the authority that God gave him to the devil. Don't you never say, your great, 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 great grandfather, Uncle Adam. Tell to you never tell you never say, Uncle Adam transferred the dominion, which is ours, to the devil. So when things go wrong, come on, say loud and clear. Say when things go wrong, on heart, God is not responsible. He's the person that took over from your grand uncle. So he's the one that kills. He's the one that steals and he's the one that destroys. So I say, why is this so important? It's so important so that you can know how to use your own authority. Because what Jesus now did was that he paid the price, rescued you from the domain of Satan. Now, there's a difference between you being rescued from Satan and your planet being rescued. Your planet has not yet been what? Rescued. That's why all this global warming thing they talk about is true. Things are going wrong. And you look at what do you expect? It's being run by a thief. <laughs> you can't put a thief, a higher assassin. <laughs> <laughs> and a mass destroyer in charge of a domain and expect things to go smoothly. So don't blame God. Blame the person your grand uncle transfer the dominion to. Listen, the death of Jesus rescued you, but he has not rescued your planet. But the good news is you are in this world but you are not of this world. Oh, somebody shout, I'm not of this world. In other words, the impact of that useless devil has nothing on you if you know your place based on what Jesus did. But talking about your world, it's not being wrong by God. Is the devil that messes things up. But a believer has a right to say, not in my space. Oh, get on your feet. I feel the power of God. Get on your feet. Somebody, the Bible says right from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence take it by force. The reason why he said that is because the devil is unleashed everywhere. But now a generation is rising up. A generation rising up in dominion, in the sense of authority. They know the devil is running the world, but not their space. I want you to turn around say, not in my space. Not in my space. Come on, Shari, say, not in my space. Not in my space. The devil is messing. You know, in fact, the Bible says, in the last days, perilous times shall come, but not in my space. Oh, come on, Shari, say, not in my space. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. Devil, you might be running the planet. You are not running me. You are not running my family. You are not running my career. Somebody ought to be talking right now. You are not running my life. You are not running my health. Not in my space. Your mess does not become my mess. You are the God of this world, but Jesus is the Lord of my life. Somebody shall not in my sphere. You may be seated. I've said all that to come to this point. God needs the partnership of responsible believers to enforce his will on heart. Firstly, because this is your planet. You still have a right to invite another spirit. Write it down. 
There's a spirit running this world. But you have the right to invite another spirit. Now, listen, this world might be physical, but it's run from the spiritual realm. I don't believe in all those spiritual things. Hey. So what did you just say? That's my response to you. Because the last person that said that, demons dealt with him. Reverend George has preached about this severally. He said, he talked about how his father, you know, one of those stubborn elders. I said, they can't do anything to me. And you are confronting occultic demonic people with stubbornness. Strong edge. What else do you call it? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I was going to say determination, but you know what he said? He said ignorance. I listened to one of his messages several years ago. He said, they killed my father. As a young boy, I watched how my father was killed because he was, he was just using, no, there's nothing you can do to me. And you are confronting demonic people. You are not demonic. And you are not godly. <laughs> it's, just, it's all in the mind. It's not in the mind. No. Please. Please don't allow a motivational speaker to ruin your life. Just believe it. Believe what? They are demons. And they are not just in Africa. They are everywhere. Yes. Demons on the north side, south side, west side. Of course, a lot of them in downtown. Demons <laughs> everywhere. From California to Illinois to Indianapolis, demons are everywhere. There are people that, in fact, they are more, it's more like 80% demon, 20% human. That's how much the devil has taken over them. In fact, every time they show up in your workplace, these are, you know, the Bible talks about Jesus being the express image of God. There are people, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if you've ever worked with somebody like that. It's like, in fact, the moment, just hearing his voice on the phone, your heart, well, ah. Because that is an express image of the devil. They are demons. They are everywhere. They are black witches. They are white witches. You know, I read something two days ago that broke my heart. Some useless demonic people said, oh, we're going to Asorok. That's the capital of Nigeria where the president says to cleanse the house. I cursed them. I cursed their generation. They will not excel. They are playing with crash. Kind of useless. With all the things we are dealing with in that, in that country. And I say, want to cleanse. Cleanse what? You mean you want to, you want to strengthen? The, the demons that's been there for the last eight years, we're, we're, we're planning to, to remove it. And I say, cleanse. no, please don't take any demon there again. But demons are real. Don't you say demons are real? Demons are real. Don't be stupid. The mere fact that we say, do not be afraid, does not mean you ignore. In fact, the Bible says, do not be ignorant. Demons are real. But you have capacity. Yes, have capacity. But you can only exercise a capacity that you have identified. And one of the ways to use your capacity as a believer, because Jesus is not just Jesus and his body. And when I'm talking about his body, I'm talking about you. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. You, are Jesus's you are Jesus' body. You know, I said something on Friday. I said, when we say pray in the name of Jesus, it's beyond, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You know, some people believe if they have not used that phrase in Jesus' name, they've not prayed. That's religion. Praying in the name of Jesus is beyond using the phrase in Jesus' name. It literally means in the Greek, praying as Jesus. See yourself as the expression, extension of Jesus. Jesus might not be here physically, but you are here. So pray like Jesus will pray. Mm. Address situations like Jesus will what? Address situations. When Jesus saw storm, what did he do? And before he spoke, he slept. Write it down. Uh -huh. Some of you, you sleep, you speak to you. Before he spoke, he... Because the speech that has power is the speech that comes out of sleep. <laughs> he slept before he what? He spoke. Because some of us are speaking. We are actually speaking. But it's out of fear. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I, as I, as I, as I want to enter this plane, may, 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 may not crash. You don't stammer. What's the problem? Fear has gripped your heart. That is not a prayer of faith. That's a prayer of fear. What about the angels of God that are watching over me? 
No evil shall befall me. Uh -huh. That's the way to pray. You pray from rest, not with fear. The devil must not be your primary motivation in the place of prayer. The finished work is what? Your primary meditation. Is somebody listening to me? So now, the reason why we're running this school of prayer, and you must come, or, you know, my wife teaches better than me. You should know that by now. You must come, listen, so that you will not just be firing blanks. Because some people pray, but it's more of an emotional release and not burst. In fact, when they are talking, Gabriel and Michael are looking at each other and say, what are they saying? <laughs> because it's gibberish. The only language everyone understands is what is based on the word. Amen. If the word is not the basis, everyone does not record it. So it's not just praying. It's praying intelligently. Even talking about praying for the rain, it has to be intelligent. There are five things I wrote down where intelligent prayer is concerned. Come on, are you getting blessed this morning? I wrote five things down, and I want to run through them. Talking about intelligent prayer, I wrote five things down, and I don't want to, 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 to miss it. So earlier on, I was talking about why do we pray? All the things I said was built around why do we pray? We pray because Satan is committed to hindering the spread of the gospel. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. The Bible says, we desire to come to you. We wanted to come to you. That was Paul. Time and again, but Satan hindered us. That was Apostle Paul. There's such a thing as satanic hindrance. Everyone under the sound of my voice, whose life, whose health, whose finances, whose career, whose marriage is being hindered right now, I break that spell in the name of Jesus. So there's such a thing as satanic hindrance that somebody needs to what? Break. One. Two. Why do we pray? Satanic blindfold over people needs to be removed. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. If our God should be hid, it is hid to them who are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded their sight. They cannot see. And that's why you don't just go out to minister Jesus, you pray first. So that the ground would have been prepared and the people you are going to be talking to will be receptive. There's a way God prepares the ground and your words will carry weight. Because the blindfold has been removed. So we pray because there's such a nice as what? Satanic blindfold. Three, why do we pray? We pray to activate laborers to partner with God. Genesis chapter 2 verse 5 makes it clear. God has not caused it to rain because there was no man to till the ground. As powerful as the rain of God is, he needs men, sons, daughters, young men, old men. To play their part. The young men must see vision. The sons and the daughters must prophesy. Even the old men must dream dreams. That's why the Bible says in Luke chapter 10 verse 2. Pray ye that the Lord of harvest will send laborers. There is a sending forth of laborers. Activation of laborers which is key. Fourth. The fourth reason why we pray. God needs a permission to carry out his plan on earth. I already explained to that to you. Because the heart has been given to man, so man calls the shot. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was man that gave Satan, which is a spirit, the right to rule us. So another man, and that man can be you, can give God the right to rule us. Amen. That's why the Bible says the effect of have a prayer of a righteous man. It's not just any righteous, a righteous man. The man component is important. A righteous angel cannot get it done. He's a righteous man because the planet belongs to men. Why do we pray? Fifth, we pray because prayer gives wing for gospel to fly. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Second, Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. We're talking about why do we pray. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of God may run swiftly. What does it mean to run swiftly? To run with speed. So there's a, there's, a, there's a speed that comes to the preaching of the word when prayer is when prayer goes ahead of it. So 
The, the word of God can be slow or fast. There's, there's such a thing as demonic resistance that it takes prayer force to push through. And that's why the Bible says, pray without ceasing. If the devil does not take a break, then you should not take a break. Because if you take a break, things will go slow. Prayer makes things to go fast. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So having to cover how do we pray? Why do we pray then? Let's talk about how do we pray? I'm going to be fast. I'm going to be fast because I already covered it on Friday. So if you didn't come on Friday, God bless you. I don't know if you got why do we pray. Now, how do we pray? I, I, this is all about being effective in prayer. In other words, prayer that reflects New Testament intelligence. There's such a thing as intelligence of the new covenant. Number one, pray wearing your new robe. What is your new robe? Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 talks about the robe of righteousness. Now, if you read the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, you will realize, you know, the moment that son decided to come back, one of the things that was given to him was a new robe. And that is a type of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus that we have. For you to operate in this region, as a child of God, you can operate with guilt. If you are covered with guilt and have not embraced the gift of righteousness, you cannot be effective in prayer. He that knew no sin was made to be seen that you might become the right. So your understanding and revelation of righteousness as a gift, not what is hand or achieved, is key. Why are you righteous? Because Jesus died and you believe. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. If your neighbor is not responding, say, pastor is talking. Say, neighbor. You are righteous because Jesus died and you believe it. So don't hand points to be righteous. Just receive the gift of righteousness. And it's key because this is the effectual father prayer of a righteous man. So there's a man part, but that man must be righteous. But the only problem is this. Man cannot acquire enough points through performance to be righteous. So he must receive righteousness as a gift. That's why we call it unmerited favor. You've not done anything right, but yet he robed you with righteousness. So that you can approach him appropriately. Secondly, you pray as Jesus. I already covered that. When you say in the name of Jesus, it's more than the phrase in Jesus' name. That mind said that this is Jesus praying. How many of you believe you are a member of his body? If you are a member of his body, you are speaking as him. There's no such thing as my feet is just doing his own thing. When that happens, your feet and your head are not in alignment. What do you call that? Medical people, help me out. A lot of you here. What do you call that? That person needs help. The hand is just going any direction. And the head is saying, ah, I don't want you to go there. Now listen, that is a sick person. The body of Christ is not sick. The head and the body are one. And you are his body. Turn to him and say, hello body. Hello body. So reflect your head. Pray like your head. What Jesus would not say in the place of prayer, don't say it. Did you ever read an account of Jesus praying like, Father, I know I'm nothing, I'm useless, I've not done anything right, but please, if you can, paradventure, mistakenly, you know, just do something. I, you know, listen, Jesus did not talk like that. Where did you get that from? You are son as Jesus. So pray as Jesus. Some of you never say pray as Jesus. Then thirdly, pray with authority. Ephesians 1.21 says, you have been raised far above, not barely above. <laughs> no, I know those demons are around, village demons, city village, every demon. Listen, your problem is your revelation of demons is more than the revelation of Jesus. Demons are real, but what you have in Christ Jesus is more real. Why, you not, why not focus on you? I mean, Jesus is in all syllabus. All these electives you are taking, shut it down. Just focus on Jesus. If you know your authority, you are covered. 
The Bible says you will cast out demons. You are that powerful. Elijah could not cast out demons. Elisha, who had double portion, could not cast out demons. Moses, even, do you know what the Bible says in Jude? He said, the archangel, Michael said, the Lord rebuke you. Because there was no authority to address demons. But now Jesus got the authority and he shared with you. Etranion says, he said, they will forcefully evict them. You know, in Mark chapter 16, when he was listing what we do in his name, the first thing he says, he said, you will cast out demons. Rise up and turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a demon caster. I'm a demon caster. Uh, come on, come on, say, I cast out demons. Cast out demons. Maybe some of you need to, you know, upgrade your Instagram profile. I mean, profile, say, this one, I chase demons. I chase them out. Workplace demons. Neighborhood demons. I yank. It says they will yank out demons. Talk to your neighbor and say, I'm a demon yanker. I'm a demon yanker. I yank them out. I yank them out. Okay, you may be seated. By the way, if you get any strange uh, Instagram message about a, what the, the uh, orphanage or whatever, it's not for me. And by the way, to the glory of God, as of this morning, I'm verified. So if you don't see, if you don't see the blue tick, it's not my account. My account is verified. Okay. If you want to know the secret, I will lay hands on you after the end of the service. And you shall be verified. Okay. Two more. Pray fear. Pray with fearless boldness. Pray with fearless boldness. Pray with fearless boldness. Now listen. The Bible says let us approach. Let us come boldly to what? To the, we don't just come. We come boldly. And our boldness is informed. Is because we know who we are. We know there is no reason to be afraid. Jesus has conquered Satan and the power of death. We are enveloped in the love of God. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm not even afraid of God. Don't you never say, I'm not afraid of God. i say, oh, I'm afraid of God. You know, there's a song they used to sing in my dialect growing up that I'm afraid of God. I'm not. I reverence God. Don't you say, I reverence God. I'm not afraid of you. If your children are afraid of you, you are a bad parent. Your parent, your children should revile you but not afraid of you. We come fearlessly by the blood of Jesus. And lastly, we pray from rest. We pray from rest. This is how we pray. We pray for rest. We don't pray to finish what Jesus did not complete. We pray knowing he has completed it. And that's why when we pray, we believe. Yes. And we rest. Even when the delivery has not been made, we are resting. I mean, uh, we did some more grade upstairs this week, and part of the components that were supposed to be used in finishing the upgrade did not come on time. We are hoping that it will come on Friday. But rather than panic, did you know what I did? I went back to the order, and I was monitoring it. I was tracking it. I paid for it. It must be delivered. Yeah. So come to 30 p.m., they dropped it. So I called the contractor. It has been dropped. And the contractor said, drop it in church. And the contractor showed up and fixed it. I don't know what you ordered. When you ordered it, that's when you believe. You believe because it was finished. Just because the delivery has not been made does not mean the order is not real. Right? Stand up. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3, it says, they that believe have entered into his rest. Stunt to him and say, pray from rest. Say it again. Say, pray from rest. Religion tells you, you will rest when the manifestation happens. But that's religion. But the word teaches, you rest when you pray. Matthew 21, 22 is when you pray, when you pray, believe in then you will receive. In fact, if there's anything that 
connects believing and receiving, talking about physical manifestation, is rest. Praying, believing, resting. Then you what? You will see. Have you prayed for something? It has not happened. Rest. Because the moment the order was made, the realm of the spirit released it. It might take a while for the delivery to arrive on heart. I don't know your address. You know, there's some very, very interesting address. And there are times that the delivery was pla- will be placed. <laughs> you know, for some reason, the UPS in our neighborhood, they have derived pleasure in dropping our stuff into our neighbor's compound. Severally, I will just see notification, it has arrived. And I will go forward and like that. Ah, there's nothing here. But thank God, Amazon, they take picture. I will just see where I said, this, there's no place in my house that looks like this. There was a day I was looking around in the neighborhoods <laughs> only to realize it's my neighbor's house where they dropped it. But because I ordered it and it's mine, and when they have picked it, I told my neighbor, it's mine. I have proof. The proof was given when the order was made. I rest in God. Come on, have you learned something this morning? Come on, have you learned something this morning? Can you lift up your hands and just appreciate God? Ma sota bala kataya.